I, this I found sort of stunning. Um, at first, I was like, oh, maybe he's referring to, like, Mansion and Cinema. I'm talking about uh, the um, the uh, uh, Democratic strategist Paul Be- uh, Begala on with CNN's Poppy Harlow um, talking about um, responding to uh, Martin Luther King's daughter-in-law suggesting that you know the democrats are not doing enough and that biden's not doing enough in terms of like pressuring for um for voting rights and here is uh begala this is interesting theory paul let me start with you and the words of the daughter-in-law of martin luther king jr andrea waters king this is what she told politico quote what we have seen with president biden is what happens when he puts the full force and power behind an issue like infrastructure. What we want to see is that same power and passion being put behind voting rights. Do you think that's fair criticism? Did President Biden put more effort into getting infrastructure passed, for example? Well, he he got infrastructure passed, and that's a good thing because success can can breed success. He is putting the full force of the presidency behind it. I I think the problem for the Democrats right now is, is not that they have bad leaders. They have bad followers. Okay, I read the most amazing essay today from Andy Young. You know, Andy is former mayor of Atlanta, former UN ambassador, and more importantly, probably the closest confidant and aide to Dr. King. He told this story. December of 1964, uh, Andy Young and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. go to see Lyndon Johnson to push him for a Voting Rights Act. Johnson says, I can't do it. I, I used all my power to get the Civil Rights Act done last year. I don't have the power to push Congress any further on voting rights. As they left the White House, Andy Young's words, he said, I asked softly, I asked uh, Dr. King what he thought. He said, I think we got to go get the president some power. And so you know what they did? They organized, these are Andy Young's words, we mobilized the churches, the universities, the labor unions, the business community, a coalition of people of goodwill. In other words, those of us who want to save voting rights, we need to get to work. I I do think Biden is putting everything behind this, but he needs needs better followers. So he needs all of us in the game as well. I remember what he said about the power. Got oh, it. boy. Well, maybe if the PRO Act was passed and we had unions that could organize, yes. uh, maybe if Everything. we had state parties that were effing funded and we had a pipeline to organize, it's almost like Paul Begala and his little group of people basically cut the legs out from any organization that could organize. That's right. I mean, let, let, let's be clear of what's happened with the with the past um, three or two uh, Democratic administrations. You had the one that he worked for, um, uh, Clinton, and Clinton. nothing, nothing to strengthen unions, to organize those unions, um, basically lost the South. So the churches are out out of the, you know, are out of uh, out, out of contention. You had Obama, which uh, the Obama administration set out to disempower not only the state parties, right, with Rahm Emanuel coming in uh, as the uh, as the party chair um, uh, 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 after his ouster, but also any other outside organizations and 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 make sure that none of those were funded. God knows how many years that that set things back. And incidentally, under Obama. The loss of a thousand Democratic state and local uh, seats. There's no infrastructure anymore. Well, this is the part, this is like what kills me. Remember the shellacking? You would think after the shellacking, Obama would be like, hmm, maybe, maybe we should put a little bit more money into the parties. Now, what they do is they have this gimmick. It's like means testing for state parties where the state parties have to prove that they're viable and then they get a little grant, a little grant that what pays for like one mailer. I mean, there's only like three parties that can function independently of the DNC. It's New York, California, and Illinois. This is a joke. There's this uh, famous Bertolt Brecht uh, poem, a uh, dilusung. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right in German, but here I'll just read it. Um, after the uprising of the 17th of June, the secretary of the Writers' Union had leaflets distributed on the Stalin A, arguing that, uh, Stalin Ali, argu- stating that the people had forfeited the confidence of the government and could only win it back by increased work quotas. Would it not be simpler for the government to dissolve the people and elect another? And, like, that's the thing. He mentions LBJ as if 
as if Biden's been acting like LBJ and given anybody like the idea that, oh, if we do a little bit more pushing, maybe we can get some more. It's there's been no actual like encouragement. Of but Biden used all. all of his power, <laughs> yeah. just like LBJ did to get the Civil Rights Act. He used all that to get the bipartisan infrastructure bill that was basically a highway bill. Right. I mean, if there was a story where Joe Biden expended all of his power that he had and it expended like, but this guy was the one who was saying six months, the Republicans don't worry. And Joe Manchin, well, I just don't need to, I don't need to deal with him for whatever, six to eight months or Chuck Schumer sitting on that memo in July, or let's invite the Republicans in because what we really have to worry about is this, this show that we're bipartisan. And then when they fail, let's let Portman and Cinema come in. And then let's tell the progressives, hey guys, don't worry. I promise you the votes are there for the Build Back Better bill just passed the bi uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill. I mean. To not see the failure of the Democratic leadership here is to be completely I, I just live well, in a different place. The, it's a the the commitment to the uh, zombie Democratic Party is religious, and the <laughs> zombie Democratic Party can never uh, have its own failures. Only the voters who are supposed to get behind them, regardless of how they screw over the people that got them in the position of power you still have to be behind them so just you know stop hitting yourself stop hitting yourself stop hitting yourself that's the dynamic here and like i understand that both of these parties are filled with elites who are out of touch and that they they largely can't stand the people that get them into power and they have contempt for them i understand that that's the case but at least the republicans try to hide it a little bit better a bit better and give them red meat that the the base cares about the democratic party doesn't even do any of that biden won't cancel a dollar of student debt right now which would be an exact kind of thing that would throw um you could throw some some sustenance to your base but they they starve you and then they say why don't you support us why aren't you strong you, yeah you got your tests guys i think they've done enough you got your at-home tests but we didn't even get those. You get it. First off, they're not they're not ready yet. <laughs> oh, right, me, right. It takes ten days for them to show up. So get your tests right now. <laughs> get your tests right now. You bring up a good point, Emma. It reminds me of what year did uh, gay marriage pass? Uh, was 2013? Am I wrong? Uh, yeah. Over spell, I think was was 2013, 2014. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. So um, I remember when Obama used to be like, you've got to make me move on it. You get out on the streets and make me move. Well, they did get out on the streets and he still didn't move, but you know who did it? Joe Biden with his like, you know, slip of his, his one of his like, you know. His ailment appearance or whatever. Yeah, that's what made him move was Joe Biden went off script for like a half a second. Right, accidentally. I think it was on like Meet the Press or something, yeah. something to that effect. Um, yeah. Make you. Well, we did. You told us to make you move. We did it. We staged an uprising in the party. What well, the funny part, this? too, is that Bagala is sitting there commenting, criticizing someone for getting up and doing exactly what he just called for them to be doing. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like. We got to make uh, Joe Biden do it. Don't criticize him about not doing it. Act like he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what if we I just say, make... thank you, Joe Biden. Right. There was a person I know who um, once got a job on a presidential campaign by sending out a press release that they were the senior advisor. They had not been hired. They became the senior advisor because it was too embarrassing <laughs> for that story. Bro. Oh, yeah. I know. I got a story <laughs> like just, that. Too. Yeah. just do that. With uh, Biden. Thanks for uh, yeah. We should, uh, for we should walk over to Joe Manchin's office and go, "Hey, really appreciate you uh, voting to carve out the filibuster." Wait, what? <laughs> did I do that in my sleep? Did I? Wait, did I? Gotcha. Ambien. I gotta lay off the Ambien. Jujitsu, guys. Jujitsu. So that's um, that's three dimensional chess for you.